Hi everyone and welcome to our third session of our Youth Wellbeing Week. Today's session will focus around confidence and self-belief and it's hosted by Paralympic footballer Jack Rutter. So Jack, I'll pass over to you. Thank you, Pippa. I hope you're all well, everybody who's connecting on the call today. It's great to be here to, to share my experiences and deliver um, my experiences and my thoughts on confidence and self-belief on behalf of Youth Wellbeing Week. Now, I know you've had some great talks already this week, so it's going to be hard to follow that, but I'll do my best. Um, so my name's Jack Rutter, and um, I'm a former para-Olympian and captain of both the England and Great Britain uh, cerebral palsy football team. Now, I'm going to be sharing parts of my story involved um, in the four main areas that I'm going to be talking about today, which can really help with your confidence levels and really help with your self-belief. I'm just going to uh, share my screen with you all now um, as part of my presentation. Just bear with me. OK, here we go. So I'm just going to pose a question to start with. Confidence and self-belief. I want you to have a think about this um, as I'm talking about the first part. Do you believe that you are born with confidence and self-belief? Because you often hear, don't you, or that young person, they're just born with confidence. They're naturally confident. Or that, that young girl over there, she's a tough cookie. She's got real resilience and real self-belief. OK, you hear that a lot. But I don't believe that you are born with confidence and self-belief. I personally believe we're born the same. And I think it's a matter of factors that influence our levels of confidence and self-belief throughout our life. It's our environment. It's what we're exposed to as a young person. It's um, our upbringing. You know, how are our parents with us? How is our school experiences? So I firmly believe that confidence and self-belief is something you can develop and learn and get better at, but also lose um, in time as well. And I want to make it so, so apparent to you all on this call today that if you don't feel 100% confident at the moment and your self-belief levels maybe go up and down, that is absolutely no problem whatsoever because it's something you can really harness and learn and develop as you get older. And I'm hoping that the four main areas that I talk about today will really, really help you. So let's get going. First point, uh, find your passion. There's me there as a young boy. Uh, I think I was about seven or eight years old. There, as you can see, I'm a massive Manchester United fan. I'm going to tell you in a moment how I found my passion and how it really helped with my confidence levels from a young age. But I firmly believe that those people who have a passion, whether it's a person in the playground at primary school or it's just somebody's grandma or grandpa who's still got that sparkle in the eye, it's because they're constantly feeding their passion. A passion brings out focus. It brings out motivation. It really gets you out of bed in the morning. It gives you that spring in your step. So I urge you to keep and continue to find your passion. And if you haven't found your passion yet, no worries at all. Keep trying to take up new opportunities, taking up new areas to develop because you will find your passion eventually. And that will directly help you with your confidence levels and self-belief. I'm just going to briefly tell you how I found my passion in life and how it really helped me with my confidence levels at school as a real young kid, four years old, all the way through to 16 when I left school. So at four years old, I was very fortunate that I found my main passion in life. As you can obviously work out, it was football. And my mum tells me this story all the time. Apparently, I run into the living room one day and I had all sorts of energy as a kid. I was always jumping off the sofa, breaking things. So I had to find somewhere to put all this energy um, into good use. And I watched a game of football on the telly. And Manchester United were playing, the team, as you can see, I now support. And there was a guy called Eric Cantonal playing, who was a terrific footballer through the 90s uh, for Manchester United. He was a real talisman of that Man United team, and he was a real maverick. He really stood out. He used to play with his collar up. When he played the game, he used to celebrate like some sort of god when he scored a big goal. And he really inspired me to want to take up the game of football. And he helped me find my main passion in life. And all of you guys on this call hopefully have your own passions. And you'll remember how you found it, whether it's music, drama, arts. It could be a subject at school. It could be a teacher who's inspired you or a sports coach as well. But it was definitely Eric Cantona. And that ended up me taking up the game of football from four years old, getting my first football for that Christmas. 
And I never put that football down for a spare second of the day, constantly, constantly practicing, constantly feeding my passion. And I was so motivated and so goal orientated from a young age because I found the thing that meant the most to me in this world. And I didn't ever give up. I sacrificed a lot. I worked really, really hard. And that led to me signing for professional football teams from eight years old. And at 10 years old, I managed to sign for Birmingham City Football Club. A huge honour, a huge opportunity for me to sign for a professional Premier League team. And I spent eight years at the Birmingham City Football Academy, all the way from 10 years old, all the way through the ranks to 18 years old. And it was a terrific time playing against all the big teams in the United Kingdom, playing in tournaments abroad as well. And it really taught me so many life skills playing football, so many transferable skills. It breeded confidence. It helped with my self-belief because I was constantly being tested. I was constantly being put in a pressure environment. I was working on my teamwork skills, my levels of respect. And that all came down to the fact that I found my main passion in life. So if you have a passion, please, please, please reignite it, rediscover it, make sure you're feeding your passion, because as I said, it will make you a far more happier person, a far more, far more fulfilled person, and it will really help you with your levels of confidence and self-belief. And as I mentioned, if you're not quite sure where your passions lie, that is because you're not taking up all the opportunities that are available for you at the moment. So obviously we've got COVID at the moment and we're in and out of lockdowns and there's those stresses and stuff at the moment as well. But now could be a great time to rediscover that passion. Get that book out and read those books because you used to love reading as a kid. It could be a sport you want to retake. Uh, take back up. So make sure you get in the garden or get your fitness levels up so you can go back to playing that sport when this lockdown and when the Christmas period is over. I firmly believe those people who have a passion in life have far better levels of confidence and self-belief. So that's my first point. Make sure you find your passion, keep feeding your passion, and it will really, really help with those confidence levels. Second point I want to bring up, the importance of resilience. I firmly believe, again, but those people who are more confident normally have shown resilience throughout their life because going through bad times and going through challenges and rising to those challenges breeds confidence because it makes you realize that you can go through a bad time and you can get over it and you can come to terms with it and you can actually learn and grow through bad things um, more than anything else in this, in this world. If things always go well for you, then you're not going to learn as much than actually when things don't quite go to plan. And that's why being a resilient person is so, so important. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about my story, which, help, which hopefully will show you how resilience has helped me and really helped me be a confident person now later on in life. And I want you to think about this quote as I'm sharing the next part of my story. This is a Winston Churchill quote. So success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So I mentioned I found my passion, didn't I? Signed for Birmingham City at 10 years old, went all the way through the ranks to 18 years old, and I was just about to sign my professional contract. That dream that I had when I watched Eric Cantona on the TV, all of my dreams were about to become a reality. However, this all changed. Two weeks before signing my professional contract, and playing in the FA Youth Cup semi-final against Liverpool, one of the biggest youth competitions in this country. And again, signing that professional contract. I was on a night out with my friends, having a really good night, really, really fun evening. But at the end of the night, as I'm talking to my friend I used to play football with, a boy walked up behind me and he actually walked up behind me and he punched me in the back of the head. And that one single blow in an unprovoked assault knocked me completely unconscious. So when I fell to the floor, I actually hit my head on a curbstone. Very, very serious injury, very, very traumatic scene. And I was rushed to French Hospital in Bristol, where I spent three weeks in intensive care. And for the first 48 hours, it was touch and go whether I would even survive or not. But fortunately, because I was young and very, very fit and healthy, I actually responded to the trauma really, really well. But I spent three weeks in intensive care and my injuries were very, very serious. 
I fractured my skull in two places. So I fractured my skull on the back of my head here and on the side of my head here. And that side fracture actually severed my cochlear nerve. And that actually made me deaf in my right ear. So my right ear is completely deaf, will be for the rest of my life. And I also suffered a bleed on the brain and some brain damage. So due to problems with my balance and my coordination, I actually, actually had to retire from professional football 18 months after the assault, which is obviously devastating, very, very traumatic, very, very hard for me and my family to come to terms with. It was a really, really tough time. And I'll be honest with you, it led to some, some dark moments, you know, problems with my mental health. You know, we're talking about wild being weak this week. Well, my wild being weak, my wild being life, sorry, wasn't very good um, during that period. I lost my motivation. I, found like, I felt like I lost a bit of my purpose because I wasn't playing football at a professional level anymore. And it was a really, really tough and challenging time. But I mentioned resilience, and this is what this slide is all about. And I had to show resilience to overcome that adversity. I had to try and find a way to come to terms with what happened and rise to the challenge again. And fortunately, in 2012, I found out that I could possibly play in what is called seven-a-side para-Olympic football which is football available for anybody who suffered a brain injury, whether that's before birth, during birth or after birth. So it's disabilities or impairments like uh, cerebral palsy, uh, people who've had a stroke and people who've had an acquired brain injury. And fortunately, I was given the opportunity to play. And it was like a light bulb moment. I couldn't believe it. So I found my resilience. It galvanised me a lot. And I was ready to set new goals and really take up that opportunity with both hands. And that's exactly what I did. It led to me captaining my country for five years. I played in five major competitions, intercontinental championships in, in Spain, in Barcelona, with my first competition. Did well in that competition and was actually named captain of the England team following my first tournament in 2013. Couldn't believe it. Dream come true. Probably the proudest moment of my life, being named captain of my country. And then I had the absolute joy and honour of captaining that England team in one European Championships and two World Championships, one in England and one in Argentina. But the icing on the cake definitely came for my story when I was named captain of the Great Britain team that took part in the third biggest sporting event in the world, the Paralympic Games. And before we flew out for that tournament, I was actually asked by Channel 4 to be part of an advert to promote the Paralympic Games, but more importantly than that, it promoted a sport which saved my life, which helped give me my confidence back, which helped give me my self-belief back. And I'm so glad I showed that resilience levels to overcome what I did. And I'd love to share that advert with you now. Before school, I'd go and play football, get back from school, drop my bag off, run straight into the garden and play football again. When I signed for Birmingham City, I wanted to try and make the most of it. I wanted to be a professional footballer. I was so, so close. It's just unfortunately, I got caught up in an assault. This lad's punched me in the back of the head and I fractured my skull in two places. I was diagnosed with having mild cerebral palsy. I couldn't even walk straight to be within inches from achieving the dream that I had. I'd say for three or four years, it was horrendous. I didn't want to be alive anymore. It matters not how many times you fall down. What matters most is how many times you rise. I got a phone call from Head of Disability Football at the Football Association. I wanted to come in on a trial with the England team. And I was like, wow, what an opportunity this is for me. I've risen from the ashes. My dreams could come on reality in Rio. Okay. Thank you very much for, for watching that, everybody. Um, and it gives me great pleasure to share that video with you um, because actually going through that those bad experiences and those bad times actually taught me what I was capable of achieving. 
Those bad things haven't defined me. They've actually made me who I am. And you can all do the same. You can go through bad experiences. You know, look at the, the current climate at the moment with, with COVID-19 and all the unknown and all the challenges. And as young people, you're suffering more than, more than most and um, doing your exams and growing up and maturing into this world and trying to find opportunities and jobs. But you can get through it. You can overcome it. Um, and if you actually try and use any sadness or frustration that you have felt in your life by going through a bad experience, you can actually use it as motivation in your life. And you actually can turn that negative into a positive if you can show those resilient levels. And I'm so thankful that I managed to do it in my life with the opportunity to play disability football. And it says at the end there in the advert, my dreams could become a reality in Rio. They really did. Um, I captained the Great Britain team to our highest finish in over 30 years um, at a Paralympic Games. We finished in fifth place, so fifth in the world. And it really helped me to come to terms with what happened, helped me come to terms with my brain injury. And it taught me so, so much. And I'm so thankful for that opportunity that CP football has given me, that Paralympic football has given me. Playing for five years, it's been incredible. And it's given me an amazing platform now, following retirement, to work for the Dane Kelly Holmes Trust, as I am today, delivering my speech, an amazing charity, helping in, helping so many young people up and down the country. I'm also a motivational speaker, uh, an athlete mentor, an ambassador and a football coach. And I think that fundamentally comes down to that resilience levels. And it has helped me to be far more um, confident in my life because I've been through bad experiences and overcome it. And you guys can do exactly the same as me. You all have got the potential to achieve so many amazing things in your life if you're resilient. And that resilience can breed confidence and help with your self-belief levels. OK, next point. Point number three, stepping out of your comfort zone. This is a big thing that we talk about at the Dame Kelly Holmes Trust. It's so, so important. You can see the diagram there. And we talk about comfort zone. We talk about the stretch zone. And then we talk about panic. And you can see the diagram there, comfort zone in the yellow. We've got the optimal performance zone in green. And then we've got the danger zone in red. What I'm saying to you is this. It is absolutely fine to live in your comfort zone. No problem at all. If you want to have an OK life. But if you really want to know what you're truly capable of achieving, you have to be willing to stretch out of that yellow comfort zone and start stepping into the stretch zone the optimal performance zone. And those are things that will make you feel a bit anxious, a little bit nervous. It will really stretch you, but it'd be amazing because you will realize what you're truly capable of achieving. One of the stats that I actually read in a book uh, by David Goggins, who's a Navy SEAL, a USA Navy SEAL, amazing man. He said the average person only reaches 40% of their true potential, 40%. And that tells me that the average person lives in their comfort zone for their whole life. So can you stretch that comfort zone? Can you do things that scare you a little bit? And what you'll find is your comfort zone will get bigger and bigger and bigger. OK, and those things that at the moment are in that danger zone, in that panic zone. All right. That at the moment, you're thinking I can never, ever do by continually trying to do things that step out your comfort zone trying to personally develop yourself, you will achieve things later down the line that are in that danger zone at the moment. I promise you. I remember my first speech that I did. Um, it could have been actually on behalf of the Dame Kelly Holmes Trust or maybe another company. It was in 2014 and I was at a leisure centre in Chesterfield and I had my story basically bullet pointed out on a piece of paper and there was about 40 kids in there. And I remember I basically read off my story but I was shaking like a leaf. I was nervous. I was red in the face. And I thought it went really, really badly. I got in the home, I had a bit of a slump, a bit down in the dumps, drove home a bit disappointed. But I got a message on Twitter from a boy who was actually in the primary school. And he said, Jack, thank you for sharing my, your, my story, your story. I thought it was really inspirational. And I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I'd maybe had a positive impact on someone's life. And OK, I wasn't very good back then. And I'm probably not very good now. I don't know. You have to tell me. But I've got better and better and better because I'm continually stepping out of my comfort zone and doing things that scare me. In five years, I managed to do a speech at the police, at the National Police Conference, um, the UEFA conference. So UEFA, the biggest governing body in UEFA in Europe for football. 
and uh, many, many speeches for the Dame Kelly Homes Trust trying to help young people. And as I said, that's because I'm doing things that are in my stretch zone. And I get nervous and I get anxious and I get worried just as you will about things. But it's so important to step out of that comfort zone. And you will mess up at times. I've messed up loads of speeches. I've messed up coaching sessions. I've messed up personal development sessions. I thought, oh, no, that didn't quite go well. Okay, but I've learned so much from it. I've grown so much from failure. I firmly believe you never lose in life if you're willing to learn from your mistakes. And that comfort zone analogy, that comfort zone um, thought process into trying to develop yourself is so, so important. So can you do something in the festive period that stretches you a little bit? Can you set some new goals in the new year that are going to stretch you a little bit and you'll truly find what you're capable of achieving? Okay, brilliant. And final point, number four, health and well-being. It's obviously well-being week, um, so I can't not talk about um, well-being um, at all as well. It's so, so important. You've got eight parts of well-being. Um, you've got obviously emotional, you've got spiritual, you've got intellectual, physical, environmental, financial, occupational, and social. And it's important to know about these eight areas of well-being. And the more that you can try to um, get these sorts of things in order and try to develop them, the better. So take spiritual, for example. If you're having problems with maybe stress and focus, you might want to take up yoga or some sort of meditation. That could really help with calming your anxiety down. If you've got an important exam coming up or an interview for a job, I found by stretching every day, I'm getting a bit old now after all the years of playing football, having a good stretch really helps relax me before big events in my life. If you're maybe not stimulating yourself enough, look at the intellectual one. Can you maybe read a few more books? Take up a new course. Always try and feed that brain. I talked about feeding a passion. It's so, so important to feed your brain as well. And that will really help with the intellectual part. I'm just going to talk about emotional and physical well-being as well. Physical well-being is so, so important. Um, can you maybe try and think about doing some more physical exercise over the Christmas period? And not going from doing nothing to suddenly running a 10K. Could you go for a nice walk with your family? Could you maybe do a nice jog for a few kilometers? That will really help with your well-being, your confidence levels. And then you might start trying to set yourself targets. Can I run it within a certain time? A bit of that competitive edge. That will then enhance your self-belief levels as well. And emotional stuff is obviously a big thing at the moment, a big topic. A lot of people... Uh, are suffering greatly with their with their mental health because of the unknown and the challenges that we're all facing at the moment. So I plead you to talk about it, uh, to share those experiences, uh, learn off new people, and it can really, really help with your emotional levels, your emotional well-being as well. Stay connected with people, talk with people as well. And as I said, if you can get those eight areas in some sort of order, and the earlier that you know about this, the better. It can really, really help with your confidence levels, not just now but later on in life. And you'll be ahead in some of these. You'll, some of these will be really good. Some of them you'll be still be working through. Okay, it's not a problem. Take occupational, for example, your job. You're in a, such a great position as a young person, working your way through life. And you maybe do a job and you're like, you know, this isn't for me. This isn't making me feel satisfied or rewarding. I've been there, I've done it. But you can really find a job that really, really makes you feel good. That really makes you feel rewarding. And as I said, if you can get all of those eight parts in order and you can start to develop them now and research them and help you in some way, it will really, really help you, not just with your health and well-being, which is probably the most important thing, but it will lead to you being a more confident person um, who are more confident in uncomfortable situations, but also have higher levels of self-belief. I truly, truly believe that. And just finally, I'd like to recommend a book for you to read okay i'd like to recommend a book for you to read um, it's not my book don't worry i haven't got a book book out yet i'm not going to tell you to re uh, read or or buy my book but maybe ask your, your parents or your loved ones for this for christmas it's a book that's just been brought out by matthew saeed matthew saeed was a former england number one table tennis player but he's probably a better author now he has brought out some amazing books covering all sorts of things helping people in business in sport, but he's brought out a new one called Dare to Be You, and it's focused on young people. And my mum actually sent me some ex extracts from it. She sent me three things 
which I think are so, so important for young people to realise. And what he's, what he said in his book was this, COVID times, very negative messages out there every single day, which are making young people believe they have no future. The world is changing fast. Industries are being destroyed, but other businesses will take place. I think it's so, so important that you try to not take in all of the negativity that is out there in the news and on the media and in the papers at the moment. Yes, people are going through a bad time. I'm not denying that, but new opportunities will come out. New things will happen for young people. So try to stay positive and try not to take in all of that negativity too much. I thought that was a great point to pick up from his book. He also said um, young people need to be comfortable with change to develop resilience. So at the moment, we're constantly changing. We're trying to adapt to the COVID regulations, COVID-19, constantly trying to adapt. You need to be comfortable with that. You need to be have adaptability. You, know, to, you need to develop resilience and it will empower you later on in life. And I believe, and he believes in his book, that those sorts of qualities and skills are actually more important than any sort of degree or course or anything you can go on, because that will improve your self-esteem, and it will improve your confidence. Can you be adaptive? Can you be resilient? And it can you use in different situations to empower you to be the best that you can be. And a final point from his book, I think is really good to pass on with you today. And this is extremely important to talk about uh, because it's not something that my I'm 30 years old. So I wasn't faced with this problem growing up, but all of you guys have been. And it's due to do with social media. Um, we live in times of the curse of perfection, he says, with Instagram and social media, it teaches young people that if it isn't perfect, it's not worth it. Whereas sensible risk needs to be taken regularly. And I firmly believe that sensible risk needs to be taken regularly, as that will really help you guys to develop confidence. It will really help you to have more self-belief. And don't try and go searching for perfection, okay? Perfection does not exist. The, const the world is constantly evolving, constantly changing. Just try and be the best version of yourself that you can be and you won't go far wrong. OK, thank you for listening, guys. Um, it's been great to share my experiences on those on those four areas and obviously recited a bit from the book there. Um, so I hope that you can take something away. If you can take just one small thing away um, from what I've shared with you today then that would be absolutely great. I'm just going to unshare my screen now, as I believe that uh, Pippa is going to ask me a few questions that have been posed as well. But again, thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to the questions now just to finish off the session. Thanks so much, Jack. That was great. Um, we've actually just had one question, um, which is, obviously, as an athlete, you must have had many highs and lows, um, which would have affected your confidence. Um, do you have any top tips um, for maybe the days when you're feeling a little bit less confident um, to pick yourself back up and, and rebuild that confidence and self-belief? That's a great question. So I have a few coping mechanisms. If I'm not feeling too good, I'll have a cup of tea with, with somebody, a friend, or it could be my mum. I'll ring her up and have a chat with her or with my girlfriend. I think talking about things is really, really good. I like channeling my energy in a positive way. So I'm full of energy all the time and I can obviously... Things are going badly and negatively, I might point it in the wrong direction. But I try and point it in the right direction by maybe going for a run, going to the gym, staying physically active. And um, that really, really, really helps as well. And just saying to yourself, tomorrow's a new day. Everyone goes through bad times. Everyone goes through challenges. Every single person on this call would have been through challenges and bad times. But what's amazing about life is luckily the next day you wake up, it's a new opportunity. It's a new opportunity to put things right, get things in order, set new goals, and you will get through tough times in your life. So I'd say talking about it, staying physically active, you know, your diet's important as well. And just having that self-belief that you can get through bad times when they, when they occur in life will really help any young person. Thanks, Jack. I think that's great advice. Um, thank you so much for today's session. And hopefully everyone can take something away with them today to boost their confidence a little bit. Um, tomorrow will be our session um, focused around setting goals for yourself um, and that will be hosted by Paralympic swimmer and paratriathlete um, Dave Hill. So we look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you. Thanks guys. Bye bye. Thanks Jack.